Okay, I'm going to show you how to do a French heel flap gusset. Okay. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to take your loom that you're using and divide the pegs in half. And then you will need to divide it by um, three. And um, you usually get, see with this one, it's 40, 20, 6.6, .6, but um, I want to just use six. So if you have a number, you want to use a smaller number and keep the larger number in the middle on this one. Normally you keep the smaller number in the middle, but the you're going to keep the larger number. So it's going to be six, six, and eight. Um, and normally it's seven, seven, and six, but you're actually going to use six. All right. Well, you need to do a certain number of rows. So you're going to take six and you're going to times that by two, which of course is 12. And you're going to add two more rows to that. So you're going to do 14 rows. You're going to do um, back and forth between those 20 pegs. You're going to do say 14 rows here. So what you're doing is two rows gives you a chain that you'll see here. Okay. And what you're after is the same number of chains as when you go to empty up these pegs. Because you're going to be putting six stitches onto a stitch holder or stitch markers in order to do the little square heel area over here. And so that's what I meant when you divide it by three, it ends up being six. So you're going to have six stitches that are going to come off on this side, six that are going to come off on this side. And then you're going to do six times two, which is how many rows you generally do. But to make sure that you have enough change, you're going to do an extra two rows, which means you're going to do 14. So I've already done 12. I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how this goes. So what you want to do is you want to slip the end stitches. So you're just going to skip that and you're going to knit your way over. All right. And then when you get to the other side, you're going to slip it again and knit your way over. And this will complete your heel flap. So for a 40 peg loom, I'm going to do 14 rows of knitting 20 back and forth for my heel flap. This is where you can continue your stitch pattern that you may be doing on the um, cuff all the way down. That's usually where the benefit of a gusset heel is, is you can complete the stitch patterning all the way down to the heel. It adds more dimension to your sock. All right. And you're going to need that last stitch. Now, what you're going to do at this point is you're going to slip that first stitch. You're going to knit over five. So, one, two, three, four, five, which will be six pegs over here. The French gusset is going to have more of a point on that heel, so what you want to do is you want to knit over five more. So one, two, three, four, five, because you're doing eight, all right, and, and you're going to be working your way from the middle out, and so your middle stitches on an even one is going to be, of course, four and five, which is why you knit it all the way to um, peg five. Okay, at this point we're going to go ahead and we're going to take off our six stitches on each side. I have my stitch holders in use, so I'm going to use my stitch markers that work a lot like a, um, a safety pin. So I'm going to take these off and place them in the middle of the loom. Okay, so you stick that through, 
can even pull it off. And you're going to do six stitches on this side and six stitches on the other side. So pause the video and get your stitches, six stitches off this side, six stitches off this side. Just pause the video, get that done, and then we'll come back and I'll start showing you the actual heel and then I'll show you how to do the gusset. Okay, we got our six stitches off on this side on stitch markers and six stitches off on this side. Now what we want to do is start working our heel area, our little square under the heel. And what I want to do is I want to wrap and turn and knit two. So you're going to be working your from the middle out, wrap and turn, knit two, knit two together, wrap and turn, knit three, knit two together, wrap and turn, knit four, knit two together, wrap and turn, knit five, knit two together, wrap and turn, and knit seven, I mean knit six, knit two together. Then you're going to pick up your closest stitch here out of yours, and you're going to put it back onto the end peg, okay? Then you're going to take that marker out. Alright, then what you're going to do is you're going to slip that first stitch and you're going to knit six and knit all three of those stitches together. And knit all three of the stitches together. Then you're going to come over here and you're going to find your first stitch of the six and you're going to place it onto the peg, on the end peg. And then you're going to slip that first stitch over here and you're going to knit your way over. knit two together and then you're going to do the same thing on this side now you're going to pull up the next closest stitch slip that first stitch and knit your way over knit two together. Find your next closest stitch on the other side. Slip that first stitch, knit your way over. together and you're going to continue this until you have no more stitch markers so go ahead and pause the video and complete adding in your stitches on the sides here until you're just ready to be adding these chains you see here back all right let's go ahead and pause the video get your stitches added back and then we'll go from there 
Okay, we've now created our little heel wedged in area here, as you can see, and it has more of a point to it. That's what part of it's more of the French heel flap gusset. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to, you see these chains here, you want to connect them to your pegs. Now you can choose to add one half of the chain or you can you choose to add both halves of the chain. If you add both halves of the chain you're typically not going to have um, holes but it will be tighter to get all those the second half of the chain on. So if you don't really want to push the um, the yarn too much on that you can do just one half but if you get them all on and you think you can add the second half of the chain go in and add the second half of the chain in. What you want to do is you want to go in and you want to do the same thing over here. And I'm choosing to do the bottom half of the chain first and put it onto the pegs. You'll know if you skipped a chain. If you don't have a chain at the end like you're supposed to. Alright, now I'm going to get back in and add the other half of my chain in. And it's going to be tight and you want that. Because the snugger it is when you go to add everything back in, the better. And if you're concerned about there being a hole, you can take part of the stitch work here and add it to the next one if you're wanting to remove a hole that's if you see a hole that's likely all right now we have it basically done all right now what you want to do is if you want to add more of a gusset and you have a higher arch and you want to give yourself a little bit of room um, what you want to do is you want to start and you want to short row out so what I want to do is I want to wrap because I'm on peg 8 I'm going to wrap and turn and I'm going to knit my way over And then I'm going to knit two together. All right. Then I'm going to wrap and turn that next peg. And I'm going to knit my way back. that wrap and turn over and knit the chain over. There. Then I'm going to wrap and turn the next peg, knit my way over, turn and knit over the chain. Okay. 
Okay. So. You can add in slowly like that. And um, that'll add in a little bit of gusseting on the sides. You can also do it a little differently and do a um, go all the way to the edge and decrease your way back in if you should choose. It's entirely up to you. Um, this kind of does it a little differently to work your way out. So you can do it either way. Um, you can work all the way out and then work your way back in like a normal decrease or you can do like I'm doing here where you work yourself from the middle and work your way out. It will change up the way it looks when it's on and I will show you how it looks different when it's on. So go ahead and pause the video and add back in all your wrap your your stitches through here and then um, I'll go from there and then I'll show you the difference between having done it this way and, and doing it the other way where you go and you knit all the way over to the end wrap and turn and then decrease your way down I'll show you how it looks different but there are two options you can do this as but the French part of this is that there is a point right here. A regular gusset is when you start and you um, don't have it at a point. In my original gusset, heel flap gusset pattern is actually a Dutch gusset. So I'll have uh, go ahead and let you know that that's technically a Dutch heel flap gusset square heel is what they call it. So pause the video, complete this, and then we will go from there. Okay, um, I've wrapped and turned an extra peg over here where you can see I was closing up that hole. And I'm back to here. I'm going to knit these together. Then I'm going to wrap and turn, and then I'm just going to knit all the way around. If there's two stitches, make them one again. And that should complete the French heel flap gusset. And this is the extended gusset here. Um, there's three ways you can do this. You can just go ahead and knit your way around and that kind of thing. And um, and not worry about the short rowing out, but if you have more of an arch and you want a little bit more space, you can either short row from the middle out, or you can go all the way out and decrease back in. And I will show you at the end of the video how these three different ways of doing that gusset look. Okay, so... knit those two over and you'll have just completed your heel flap, your point, which is the French part of that, the French point of the, gus the gusset. So there's your gusset heel there, all right, and then you have your extra short rowing out, all right. Now, at this point, you just go on from the base of the sock, from here, the, the bulk of the sock. And uh, a lot of times, this gusseting really pops out more if you continue doing half of the loom in stockinette and then the other half of the loom in your textured stitching. And it shows up even more. So that is the French style gusset, heel flap and gusset. And, um... The original one I did was a Dutch 
and then there's just the regular gusset and then there's the reverse so I'll be showing that in this video how to do the variations of the gussets now we already went over how to do the heel flap so that's going to stay the same no matter which one that you do the thing that will change is this section here and whether you go in and you add this section in here or not. The reverse is going to be a little different. It's going to um, work up a little different when you go from doing a toe up. This is a cuff down, um, but I will be showing you how to do a gusset with toe up. Okay? Alright, so that is how you do the French heel, gusset heel. Okay, I'm going to show you the um, regular gusset, heel flap gusset, and um, the other option after you get done adding these stitches back, what you can do, um, these stitches back here, what you can do as instead of in, um, increasing out you can decrease in so I'm going to show you that alternative and um, I've done it all the way to where you do the heel flap like the other one you so follow the heel flap and taking off your stitches on putting them on stitch markers or whatever and then um, I've worked my way back in to the fifth peg one two three four five now on the regular gusset you're only going to do maybe um, if you're working with a fourth inch gauge you're probably only going to do like four increases and I'm going to go over one more okay so I'm going to I'm going to knit over six and I'm going to do four increase me um, four decreases increases sorry Okay, I'm going to wrap and turn. So I'm working between 8 pegs, and um, if you're doing the 3 8 inch gauge, you're probably only going to do 2 um, increases on each side, so about 4. If you're doing the 4 uh, inch gauge, you're probably going to want to run around um, 6 to 8 increases after this okay so this is kind of a gauge on how much you'd really prefer to do but you want more of, a, more of a rounded heel before you start adding in the stitches you just took off so I'm going to go over to peg six and I'm going to wrap and turn peg seven and I'm going to knit over I'm going to wrap and turn, pick two, and then I'm going to knit over. And then I'm going to knit two together. I'm going to wrap and turn. I'm going to knit my way over. and knit two together, wrap and turn, knit my way over, and knit two together. Alright, I'm going to start adding in my stitches over here, so I'm going to find my first one and I'm going to be placing them on one at a time as I go back and forth so I'm going to slip that stitch and I'm going to knit my way over and then I'm going to knit three together Alright, then I'm going to come over here and basically at this point you're going to do the same thing as you did on your French one at this point. You're just going to um, be adding them in one at a time. 
and knitting them together okay so I'm going to slip that first stitch and I'm going to knit my way over and then I'm going to knit two together and I'll show you one more time find your next stitch put it on the end peg slip add in so go ahead and pause the video and I'll tell you where to get up to all right you'll add in all your stitches on your little stitch markers back in all right so you're going to add all these back in and then you're going to follow the video earlier and you're going to <coughs> add all these chains back in like i showed you earlier so go ahead and pause the video and get yourself up to that point and then i will show you a um, alternative way of doing a gusset now this isn't specific to this heel flap and gusset okay and neither was the other one this is simply up to you on how you might want to um, after adding these chains back to these empty pegs it's uh, up to you on whether you want to increase or decrease and then go around um, if you just want to just start moving directly from there which is the Dutch heel uh, Dutch square heel so um, and I'll be showing that one too and I'll be starting from this section that I started with here so when you as soon as you start the heel um, that's where I'm going to start from but go ahead and pause the video and get all these stitches added back in and then put these chains onto your free stitches like I showed earlier and then we'll be going from there okay okay I've completed that and as you can see it's got a nice um, kind of curvature to it okay so what we're going to do is we're going to do the decrease method so that you can see what that looks like in that process with the gusset so what you want to do is um oops i forgot to add my second stitch over real quick okay if i thought there was a little pull up remember i told you you can, you can grab something and give it a little extra um tightening to fix that hole okay so what you're going to do is you're going to go over and you're going to knit those chains off okay so you're going to knit these chains off okay and you're gonna wrap and turn because I added um, to fill that hole in I added a little bit to an area that looks like it fill it okay so I'm gonna wrap and turn that and then I'm going to knit my way over to the other side And then when I get over here, I'm going to knit those chains over again like I did on the other side. And if it's too tight, pull the chain over one at a time. And you want it tight. Because with it, if it's not tight, you could get holes, okay? So you kind of want it tight. Knit that over. Sometimes you might need to dent the top and the bottom of the chain over. And then sometimes you can just knit it all over. 
but I find that with the Cindy Wood pegs they're really um, very sturdy so you don't have to worry about the pegs breaking off too easily okay so I've worked way way over I'm going to wrap and turn it's a crossover peg and then I'm going to knit my way over to just before the last wrap and turn and I'm going to wrap and turn and decrease my way down to eight okay and this is a way of doing a gusset here all right so there's my last wrap and turn I'm gonna wrap and turn and then I'm gonna go the other direction I'll show you one last wrap and turn and then you'll pause the video and get your decreasing down to where you have eight single stitches between your wraps and turns and this is the decrease down method rather than the increase out so wrap and turn and so keep going until you have eight single stitches in the middle with six wrap and turns and six wrap and turns, okay? Actually, I think it might be a little different, but um, actually, no, you're just getting down to six singles, I mean, eight single stitches in the middle. You'll have more wraps and turns because you went past one, so you'll have seven wraps and turns rather than six. All right. Um, so go ahead and pause the video and get eight single stitches in between your wraps and turns and then we will go from there as you can see there's your heel and then here's your gusseting through here okay nice and snug and what you want to do now is you have eight single stitches one two three four five six seven eight and at this point you want to get everything back down to a single stitch so you're going to just go ahead and you're going to keep moving in the same direction so you're basically going to knit two together six times and then if you think you might have a hole you'll knit three together but basically you're just going to knit everything together if there's more than one stitch on there and then um, knit all the way around and then that last peg will probably have three on it if you're trying to fill in the holes then of course you got to go around one more time and get those last wrap and turns together so knit two together and then once you get all those then you just knit all the way around and you're done okay so there you have it there's your heel flap right through there there's your heel section there and there's your gusseting okay and that is how you do a regular heel flap gusset now I'm going to show you the square um, Dutch square heel and it's going to be a lot more squared off and actually the only real major difference is is you're not going to do a um, increase out you're just going to start immediately in adding the um, the stitch markers so that's the only difference in that respect is that you're just going to you're going to start adding um, your stitches back in immediately so you'll go all the way to the end and then you'll come back back and forth and um, then I generally the other option is that on this gusset section you don't even do increasing you don't do decreasing you just work your way around and um, that my my first videos on how to do the 
um, heel flap gusset was actually, now that I've done my heavy research and everything, was a square Dutch heel. So I'll provide a link to that square Dutch heel in the link below so that the only thing left to learn in this video is going to be your um, reverse where you're going toe up. You're going to do your toe up version of the heel flap gusset. All right, so um, I will show you how to do that next. Okay, um, I'm going to show you how to do the uh, Dutch square heel and um, I've worked my way over and instead I've done the, the heel flap the same, taking the stitches off, you know, six stitches off and everything. And instead I'm going to work my way all the way over to the end and then I'm going to stop. Alright, so I'm going to work all the way over to the end. And there's no more, there's no increasing before you start this. So basically what you're going to do is you're just going to find that first stitch and you're going to put it onto the peg and you're just going to slip that first one and then you're going to knit your way over. and knit the two together and then you're going to find your first stitch over here and you're going to pick that up and place that onto the peg slip and knit your way over and knit the two stitches together. So this is basically the same as the other, but instead of doing any increasing, you're just going to start immediately. So go ahead and pause the video, get all your stitches added back in, and then you're going to add your chains in, and then I'll show you how to go from there. And this next option is your third option when it comes to doing the um, cuff down kind of thing. So go ahead and get your stitches added and your chains added back to the loom and then I'll show you how to go about finishing up the heel flap and really not having to do the gusset. The gusset at this point is just adding your chain back. Just go ahead and pause the video and get that much done and then I'll show you from there. Okay, as you can see it's a lot more squared off here and we've already added everything back so to finish up the Dutch square heel and not bothering with a um, gusset at all what you're going to do is you're just going to go in and add in your um, chains so you're basically going to not do anything special. You're just going to add them back in and move right along with your sock like you normally would. So you're going to move around and you're going to add your knit your chains in. Okay, and then you're just going to knit your way around. Okay. And then you're going to add these chains in here. And then knit your way around. And that's it. That is how you do the third option for your gusset section. You don't have to increase, you don't have to decrease, you can just knit it. But that is how you do the square, Dutch square heel. Okay, so your French has the point, your regular heel um, flap gusset has a nice rounder edge, then your Dutch square heel, and then we're going to do the reverse, um, so where it's toe up, how to do a gusset like that, um, heel flap gusset, so 
that is your square, Dutch square heel. Okay, so I was going to show the reverse gusset and then when um, I went to show it I thought it had too much of a process to it so I did a whole separate video on it but I had another um, version of a heel flap kind of gusset that is um, really good for the toe up if you wanted to continue a stitch patterning along the edge of the the foot on from going toe up if you wanted to continue stitch pattern all the way down but uh, this uh, this uh, this system can also work from like a regular gusset it's just going to wrap underneath the foot and you're going to have a line that's going to go up either of the back or the bottom of the foot okay and how you're going to calculate that is whatever your half your pegs are is the number of rows you're going to do on half the loom okay so that's going to be your heel flap so for instance on a 40 peg loom it's 20 is half your um, pegs and you're going to do 20 rows over 20 pegs okay back and forth and then what you're going to do is you're going to put a these um, on a stitch holder or on stitch markers that can come off easily you're going to leave two single pegs in the very middle of the stitch work untouched okay so you're going to do the heel flapping like normal except you're going to go for 20 rows rather than what was it 14 so you're going to go for 20 rows and you're going to put a stitch marker on all but the middle, the very middle two, which is going to be nine on one side, nine on the other side, for instance, on this, and that's how you kind of go in. But it's the very middle two that you don't want to put stitch markers on, okay? So, what we're going to do is you're going to do your heel flap like you normally would, and what you're going to do is you're going to take these off, okay? And we're going to do our heel section our little line okay and I would t basically call this a lined heel flap gusset because what you finish with is a line to where it is um, very clean all right now let's get this in a view so we've stopped here we're going to pick up our first stitch on this side and we're going to place it onto the stitch hole the stitch okay and you have a choice you can slip it you'll have a smoother thing if you slip the first stitch knit two together and then what you want to do is you want to find your very first stitch over here this is black one place it on this side peg on this side okay slip this stitch knit two together and get your next stitch over here and place it on there slip this stitch knit the two together again you have the choice you can either slip the stitch or you can um, knit the stitch going back you'll have more of a ridge if you choose to knit it rather than slip it okay let's go ahead and place that next stitch one, two. So you're doing the same thing. You're just working with two pegs rather than knit two together, rather than um, multiple. So stick the stitch 
Back on. Slip that first stitch, knit two together. Okay, find your next stitch, place it onto the peg. Slip, knit two together. Find your next stitch, place it onto the peg. Slip, knit two together, take your next stitch, place it onto the peg, slip, knit two together, and you're just going to continue this until you have no more stitches on your stitch holder or stitch markers on your stitches left. So go ahead and pause the video and make sure there's no more stitches on your with stitch markers so make sure that they're all on there and then we will go from there to get our gusseting in. Okay, I've added my last stitch and you should see a nice little V going on here. Okay, well we want to get those chains added back like we do um, with the other gussets. But as you can see, if you are doing this as your toe up, it'll wrap all the way. Sorry. You'll see if you're doing this as your toe up, it'll wrap all the way around to the back and have a very neat, clean, almost like a seam, so as you can see right there. Okay, now we're going to add our chains back. Okay, so there's our first one. I usually like to add half the chain, which is the far side, the bottom half of the chain first, and go back and add the top half of the chain. And you just want to go in and do like you've been doing. Add your chain back to the loom. And when you get closer to the edge, make sure you're getting each and every chain, okay? It can get a little tricky at times. Okay. I'm going to do a little overlap. All right, then we want to go in and add the other half of the chain. Make sure it's nice and snug and there's no holes we're going to develop. There's our first half. Now we want to add our second half. Okay. And sometimes this can be a little snug to get everything added back. And I'm going to add one to an overlap. Okay, and I'll add the top part of the chain back. And so that you have a nice no hole kind of thing going. Adding the bottom half of the chain is always easier first and then adding back is always the other half of the chain is always easier later. Okay. Now okay. Now what we want to do is you have the options like we've been doing. You can choose to short row out, increase in, or just knit around. Okay? And either way, it doesn't matter how you want to choose to do that. Um, I think I'm just going to work my way around and not bother with the 
decrease or increase out so um, it's entirely up to you how you want to do this depending on if you're trying to um, cover an arch area or not and this will be the last version of a gusset in this video in the reverse gusset I had to do a completely separate video because there's a lot more steps to it it's not standard like this is but this version can be done toe up or cuff down okay you're creating a seamed look that's what you're doing okay now you don't have to do this overlap like I do in here unless you want to but it keeps those holes to a bare minimum when you do okay alright so that is how you do the French heel flap gusset the Dutch square heel flap gusset and the regular heel flap gusset and then you have this one which is the line heel flap gusset and then there is the reverse heel flap gusset which is I'll provide a link in below if you're interested in that as well which is the toe up and a lot of people who've been loom knitting prefer to do the toe up concept with the Kitchener so um, I'll provide a link below on the reverse and so that is how you do these style of gusset heels